We've been doing challenge runs together now for almost three months and it's finally time to give one of our HM friends the spotlight. And we're going to start with one of our absolute favourites, it's Kenya the Spearo. Spearo is a dual normal and flying type Pokemon, and that means we have weaknesses to rock, electric and ice at two times, we have a pair of resistances to bug and grass, and we also have a pair of immunities with ground and ghost. And just before we get into the challenge run, I want to say thank you all so much for the support you've shown over the last three months. Your kind words and your support really do spur me on to keep going, especially when it gets a little bit tough with some of the harder runs. So if you do find that you're enjoying this video, please do leave a like. If you want to keep updated with what I'm doing, there are two easy ways. You can either subscribe here and put notifications on, that way you'll see when I'm live streaming, or you can follow me on Twitter at TrainerSquidgy. The links are in the description. But now let's take a little look at our Kenya the Spearow. So at level 5 we have 19 HP, we're holding a berry and our moves are Peck and Growl, we have 11 in attack, 8 in defense, special attack and special defense, 12 in speed, and our hidden power type is Ground. I'm happy with the Spearow so the graphics can come on and the challenge can commence. We'll get the potion from Professor Elm's Aid and as always I'll show you the very first encounter that we have. In this instance it's a level 2 Rattata and a critical hit Peck knocks it out in one. And just before going into Mr. Pokemon's house, I do a little bit of grinding. It's very nice to do grinding before you speak to Mr. Pokemon, because he gives you a free heal, and that saves you a little bit of time by not having to go into the Pokemon Center. And while we're having the chat there, I have a question for all of you. Who is your favorite HM friend? We've done a lot of runs together, so we've got a lot of choices, but I want to know who is your absolute favorite. And while you're answering that, we shall take on the rival. I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Cyndaquil with Spearow, and that means that the rival has a Totodile. Totodile got very close to knocking us out there, but we just about survived. And that means we can move on back into the lab and call the rival triple question mark, as we always do in every single one of these runs. And now it's time to make our way towards the Sprout Tower. Because we're a flying type Pokemon, we have the type advantage over most of the Pokemon in the Sprout Tower, so it makes sense to do it early and get that little bit of extra experience. And at the very top of the Sprout Tower, we take on Sage Lee. He has a Hoot Hoot as well as two Bell Sprouts, and the Hoot Hoot was a little bit slow, taking three shots, but we knocked all of his Pokemon out, and that means we get HMO5, which is Flash. Flash is going to come in handy a little bit later on because I have no sense of direction. But now that we've got Flash, we can move on into Falconer's Gym. He is a flying-type specialist who leads with Pidgey. And it's two shots on the Pidgey to knock it out, and out comes the Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto starts gusting at us, and our berry activates. But we knock it out in just three shots to get our first badge in a time of 8 minutes and 23 seconds. We can now move on into the Union Cave, where we'll pick up TM39, which contains Swift and we'll then go and reunite the band. We'll catch some more of our HM friends. The first one we encounter this time is a Paris, so we'll catch it in a great ball. And Paris will help out with Cut, Flash, Sweet Scent, and Dig. And the next HM friend we're going to catch is Psyduck. Psyduck will help out with Surf, Strength, Whirlpool, and Waterfall. And after we've caught both of our HM friends, we'll make our way towards Kurt's house. Kurt will tell us that there are shenanigans going on in the Slowpoke well, so we deal with them and nothing of great interest happened at all. So we'll now head into Azalea Gym where we have our second gym leader waiting. It's Bugsy and he is a bug type leader. He will lead with Metapod which is great for us because Kenya sees lunch and takes it down in just two pecks. We grow to level 19 as he sends out the Scyther. Fury Cutter does a whole two worth of damage and then five worth of damage after that and we knock it out in two. And the final Pokemon is Kakuna. We knock out Kakuna in one simple shot and that means we have our second badge in a time of 15 minutes and 18 seconds. After gym number two, we have rival number two. He is going to have an evolved starter this time, but he leads with Ghastly. And that's great for us because of our parts normal typing, because he wouldn't have been able to hurt us. We get a Zubat next, and it's two pecks to knock that out, and the final Pokemon is Croconaw. We get two back-to-back -back critical hits to knock it out, and we've defeated rival number two, and we are evolving. Kenya the Spearo is now Kenya the Fearo. And with Rival 2 all out of the way, we can make our way through the Ilex Forest. And the first thing we'll do in the forest is teach Swift to Fero. Swift is going to replace Fury Attack, which we learnt in Bugsy's Gym. And honestly, Fury Attack is one of my least favourite moves in the game. It's a multi-strike move, and it's also not 100% accurate. And after teaching Swift, we'll get HM01, that is cut, and that will let us progress through the forest. 
When we get through to the other side, we're in Goldenrod City where we'll pick up the bicycle. That'll let us move around the Johto region a little bit quicker. We'll go into the underground and grab the coin case. And we'll also give Kenya a little bit of a haircut. He seems happy about that, so we can move on into the game corner where we're going to spend 100 coins to buy our next field move friend. And this one is Abra. Abra is going to be helping out with teleport until Kenya the Spearow can fly. And I did say Kenya the Spearow because we are seeing double here. We have two Kenya in our party. And a little bit later on in the run, I actually lost about 20 seconds after using the items on the wrong Kenya. But I'm sure that won't matter in the long run. We'll pick up Dig from the National Park and chat with Floria. And now it's time to move on to our third gym. This one's Whitney, the normal type specialist, but she does have rollout on the mill tank. We'll start with a pair of Swifts on the Clefairy to get rid of it while losing only 13 HP. And we'll use Swift against the mill tank. She's locked into rollout and Swift got a very good damage roll on turn 3 there. And that means we knock out mill tank and get our badge in a time of 22 minutes and 38 seconds. Just before we head into Ecritique City, we're going to go out to the department store and pick up TM27. That is return, and we will be teaching that later on. We'll pick up HMO3 from the Kimono Dance Theatre, and now we're going to move on towards the Lake of Rage. This is another run where we're going to have to get Hidden Power early, so we might as well pick up the Rare Candy while we're at it. And our Hidden Power type this time is Ground. I found that when running normal type Pokemon, the Ground type for Hidden Power is the best because not only does it let us get through Morty with ease, it also lets us get through Jasmine an awful lot easier. So we'll teach that straight away before rival number three, and we will replace Growl, because I don't think we've ever selected Growl in battle. And we can now move on into the Burnt Tower, where rival three is waiting for us, and he will lead with a Haunter. So we're going to use Hidden Power Ground straight away to knock it out in just one shot. No curse for us this time, and we get the option to learn Pursuit. However, we decline it, because our physical attack is much better than our special attack. We'll take care of the Magnemite in one shot, and now we're on to Zubat. A swift, swift takes care of Zubat, and we are finally on to the Croconaw. Croconaw bites us for minimal damage. We knock it out with a pair of Swifts, and that is Rival 3, all done and dusted. And just before we take on Morty, we're going to make a diversion over to the Moo Moo Farms, to pick up the mint berry, and now we can go into the gym. Morty is our fourth gym leader. He is a ghost type specialist, and he will lead with a ghastly. Once again, Hidden Power Ground is going to save the day here because we'll take care of the ghastly in one shot. We'll do the same on the haunters to knock it out in one, and out comes Gengar. It's going to be a two shot on the Gengar, but fortunately for us, Hypnosis misses, so we save our mint berry, and then we can take care of the final haunter. One shot took care of it and we have defeated Morty in a time of 29 minutes and 38 seconds. We are on an absolutely incredible pace as we move on towards Olivine City. Our first destination in Olivine City is the cafe so that we can get strength. We'll teach that right now to Psyduck along with Surf and we'll make our way up the lighthouse. At the very top of the lighthouse, we find Jasmine, who wants some drugs because she's been taking care of Ampharos. So we shall happily oblige and pick up a rare candy on our way out of the lighthouse. And we find ourselves in Cyanwood City, where the dodgy shop lies. We have a little chat with a shopkeeper, and while we're here, we might as well take on the gym. This is our fifth gym, it is Chuck, and he is a fighting type specialist. And one of the great things about being a flying type is it means we aren't weak to fighting type moves. So we take care of the Primeape in just two Swifts, and now we're on to Polyrath. We peck Polyrath to take it down to half as it sends us to sleep. Our Mint Berry activated though, and that let us peck it again to defeat Chuck in a time of 34 minutes and 45 seconds. Let's now move on to the Lake of Rage, where we have a Red Gyarados to see. This battle was a lot closer than I care to admit because of Dragon Rage, and we were in slight danger of being knocked out, but we got through it in the end, and that triggers Lance the Liar with the Flyers, who tells us to stick our nose in somebody else's business down in the underground of Mahogany Town. We do oblige though, and we get HMO6 for our troubles, and now we can move on into Mahogany Gym, where Price is waiting. Price is the first gym leader to have a true type advantage over us, and it really does show in this first battle. We don't quite Oko the Seal and take a little bit of damage from that. We then don't Oko the Dugong and take an awful lot more damage from Dugong. We grow to level 37 and out comes the Pile of Swine. Swift does well under half and Blizzard knocks us out. So we're now going to replace Swift with Return. Return is going to be doing more damage than Swift at this point in the game because our Kenya is friendly enough. 
and let's see if that is enough to get through this battle without any more difficulties. It's a good start as we Oko the Seal. We don't Oko the Dugong, but take less damage because we weren't damaged by the Seal, and that gives us 71 HP for the Pilot Swine. It's a two-shot this time, and we survive on 7 HP to get the win, and we've defeated Price in a time of 40 minutes and 59 seconds. And that means we can move on straight away to Jasmine's Gym in Olivine City. She is our seventh gym leader, and she specializes in steel. She'll start off with a Magnemite, which is four times weak to ground, so we'll use Hidden Power. We'll use Hidden Power against the second Magnemite as well, and now we just need to keep our fingers crossed. Hidden Power is doing roughly a quarter against the Steelix, and we get a lucky critical hit, but Steelix takes us deep into the red. We get another critical hit as Iron Tail misses, and we knock out the Steelix with the greatest of ease. That was such a lucky battle, and a time of 42 minutes and 15 seconds for Jasmine. And that means we are on a phenomenal pace as we do our housekeeping at this point in the game. We'll pick up the rare candy south of Goldenrod, We'll pick up the other stray rare candy in Violet City, and we'll move on to Olivine City, where we have the Sharp Beaks pick up. I meant to pick this up while we were battling Jasmine, but honestly, it just completely slipped my mind. So let's now go into the Radio Tower, where we will battle the Executive at the very top of the tower. And he has a grand total of six Pokemon. He has five coughing and a pesky wheezing as well. And during this battle, we grow to level 40. And at level 40, we get to replace Peck with a much better flying type move. We get Drill Peck, which is one of the best flying type moves in the game. It definitely puts Fly to shame because it has higher base power, it has higher accuracy, it has more PP, and it's only a single turn move. So overall, it is undoubtedly the better of the two flying type moves. So we'll finish off all the coughing and wheezing with Drill Peck, and then we will equip the Sharp Beak before taking on rival number four. The fourth rival battle is in the underground of the department store, and he will lead this time with Golbat. Now we don't have anything super effective against the Golbat, so we're going to use Return and take it deep into the red, and we are very lucky there that he didn't use Confuse Ray. That means we're not confused as the Magnemite comes out, so we use Hidden Power to take care of that in one shot, and out comes Haunter. Hidden Power does its job again, and we can move on to Sneasel. Sneasel is incredibly frail and goes down to a single return, and his last Pokémon is Feraligator. Rage does a whole 5 HP's worth of damage, so we knock it out in 2 returns, and that means we get the victory and we can move on and do the rest of the Radio Tower. Nothing of great importance happened at all with the rest of the rockets, so we'll have a little chat with Mary and get the pink bow. We'll also get the radio card from the lady at the reception desk, and we can move on towards Blackthorn City. There isn't much to do in Blackthorn City apart from take on our final Jotonian gym leader. She's Claire, she is a Dragon Sight specialist, and leads with Dragonair. Return one-shots the first Dragonair, Return will also one-shot the second Dragonair, and Return will one-shot the final Dragonair as well. So no Thunder Wave for us against Claire this time, and we have the option to learn Agility here, which we decline because our speed stat is already high enough. We manage to take Kingdra into healing range as we get hit by Smokescreen, but our Kenya has very good eyesight and knocks out the Kingdra without missing, and that means we get the badge in a time of 56 minutes and 1 second. We are still well ahead of Furret's pace, and Furret was on a phenomenal pace. So let's now move on and get the rare candy east of Newbark Town, and go into Victory Road where we have our final rival battle waiting. This is rival number 5, and he leads with Sneasel. We use Return to knock it out in one shot, just as we did before, and out comes Magneton. Hidden Power takes care of Magneton with a critical hit, and he brings out his Golbat next. Return is now powerful enough to knock out the Golbat in one shot, and that brings us on to Haunter. A Hidden Power to the face is enough to take care of Haunter in one shot, and we are now on to Kadabra. Kadabra gets taken down with a single return, and his final Pokémon is for Alligator. We almost one-shot it, but it ends up being a two-shot with Return and Drill Pack, and that is the rival all done and dusted for another challenge run. That means we can go and heal up at the lady at the Pokemon Center in the Pokemon League, and we can say thank you to our HM friends. We'll say thank you to the other Kenya, to Abra, to Psyduck, and to Paris. You've all been a great help in the Johto region get some lovely rest as Firo and I take on the Pokemon League. We'll pick up our four full restores, and now just before we enter, we'll take a look at our stats. We are level 51 and we have 149 HP. We are holding the pink bow and our moves are Return, Hit Power Ground, Mirror Move and Drill Peck. We have 126 in Attack, 103 in Defense, 98 in the Specials and 138 in Speed. It's now or never. Let's see if Firo can make it through the Elite Four. Our first obstacle is Will. He is a Psychic-type specialist 
who leads with Zatu. We use Return against the Zatu to knock it out in one shot, and here comes Jinx. Jinx could be dangerous for us, but we critical hit and knock her out straight away, and he sends out Slowbro. Slowbro just wastes time by using Amnesia, so it's an easy two shot, and he sends out his second Zatu. We knock out the second Zatu with the greatest of ease, and his final Pokemon is Executor. Executor is weak to flying, so a single drill pack to the face takes care of it, and we can move on to Koga. Koga is a poison type specialist who leads with Ariados, and fortunately for us, Ariados is part bug type, so we knock it out in one, and he sends out the Fortress. It's going to be three shots here with Drill Peck, and we got very lucky that Fortress didn't go boom. That brings us on to Muck, and we Drill Peck the Muck to take it down in one critical hit. We grow to level 53 as Crobat comes out. Return takes care of Crobat in one shot, and his final Pokemon is Venomoth. Venomoth is weak to flying type moves as well, so we knock it out in one, and we can move on to Bruno. Bruno is a fighting type specialist who will lead with hits on top. It gets a little bit of damage off on us with a quick attack, but we take care of it with a single drill peck, and out comes Onyx. Hidden Power Ground takes Onyx deep into the yellow, so it's going to be a two shot on the Onyx as he brews a pesky pesky sandstorm. That means we're going to be taking damage at the end of each turn, but we managed to knock out the Hitmonchan in one shot, so we're not taking extra damage. We do the same on the Machamp with a single drill pack, and then we just have his Hitmonlee. We outspeed Legs the Hitmonlee to take it down in a single drill pack, and it feels so good to have an easy Bruno battle for once, but we can't linger, we are moving on to Karen, the Dark Type Specialist. She leads with Umbreon, so we use Return against it and we get Sand Attacked. For once though, I decide to persevere, and that seems to have paid off. We have had incredible luck with our accuracy in this run, especially when we've had our accuracy lowered, and even though I misclicked and selected Hidden Power against the Murkrow, we are still doing incredibly well. We haven't missed a shot yet, as we Hidden Power the Houndoom to take it deep into the red. That means that she will use a Max Potion, but it's just a single better damage roll next time to knock it out, and the final Pokemon is Vileplume. We didn't miss a single shot in that entire battle, and we have defeated Karen in a time of 1 hour, 3 minutes, and 38 seconds. The only barrier left between us and becoming League Champion is Lance the Liar with the Flyers, who leads with Gyarados. We're going to start by using Return against it, and we don't quite knock it out in one, and that lets him set up Rain Dance, and that is terrible for us, because that means that Dragonite can use Thunder against us to take us down to 69 HP, we don't Oko the second Dragonite, and Blizzard knocks us out. So we're going to swap the Paralyzed Cureberry with the Pink Bow. This should mean that we are able to Oko the Gyarados, and that means he can't set up Rain Dance. We then get a very lucky critical hit against the first Dragonite to knock it out in one. Out comes Dragonite number two. He uses Blizzard, but it misses, and that means we are not getting Paralyzed for the rest of this battle. Return's going to be a two-shot on the Aerodactyl, as Rockslide does a lot of damage back to us, but we are now onto the Charizard, which we managed to one-shot with Return, and his final Pokémon is Dragonite. We use Return to take it out in one critical hit, and we have beaten Lance in a time of 1 hour, 5 minutes, and 45 seconds. And we have a final league time of 1 hour, 6 minutes, and 3 seconds. And don't go away, Kanto is next. We rejoin just outside our house in Newbark Town, and I believe that is the quickest we have ever been through Johto, but we can't linger because Professor Elm has some stuff to give us. He's going to give us the SS ticket to let us get to Kanto proper, and he's also going to give us the Master Ball, which will let us pick up our final friend of the run. After that, it's a quick cycle to Cherry Grove City to retrieve our HM friends who had a lovely rest while we were doing the League, and now we have just two rare candies to pick up, before we make our way into Kanto. So the first one is here in Mount Morta, where we need Waterfall, which is why we don't get it earlier, and the second one is in the Whirl Islands. And after that, it's a quick spin, and we are in to Kanto. Our first destination is Vermilion City, where we are going to pick up another rare candy, this time from the chairman of the Pokemon Fan Club, and now we can move on into Celadon City. In Celadon City, our first gym leader is awaiting us. It's Erica, and she is a Grass-type specialist. So a little bit like Bugsy's gym, Firo comes in here and just sees lunch. He has a snack on the Tangler, he has a snack on the Jumpluff, out comes Blossom. Blossom is the aperitif, and for desserts we have Victory Bell. Victory Bell also goes down in one single drill pack, and we have defeated Erica in a time of 1 hour, 11 minutes, and 5 seconds. We're moving on to Misty, the water-type specialist, but she does have an ice-type with Lapras. 
We knock out the Golduck in a single return, and out comes Lapras. Lapras also goes down to a single return, because return is an incredibly strong move at this point in the game. Starmie puts up no resistance whatsoever either, and the final Pokemon is Quagsire. Quagsire goes down straight away as well, so we get the Cascade Badge in a time of 1 hour, 14 minutes and 38 seconds. Our next gym leader is Sabrina. She is a Psychic-type specialist who leads with Espeon, and we Oko it, so no Sand Attack for us here. We Oko the Mr. Mime as well, and that brings us on to Alakazam. Alakazam puts up no resistance, so we've defeated Sabrina in a time of 1 hour, 15 minutes and 39 seconds. Let's now move on to a trickier gym leader with Lieutenant Surge. Surge is an Electric-type specialist who will lead with Raichu. So we're going to use Hidden Power Ground to take care of it in one shot, and his next Pokemon is Magneton. We take care of the Magneton with one Hidden Power Ground as well, and that brings us on to Electabuzz. We one-shot the Electabuzz as well, and his final two Pokemon are a pair of Electrode. They both go down in exactly the same way as all the other Pokemon with a pair of Hidden Power, and it looks like I lied, that gym was incredibly easy. We get the Thunder Badge in a time of 1 hour, 17 minutes and 26 seconds. We are almost 7 minutes ahead of Furret. Let's catch the Snorlax. This is our final friend and we are only using him to steal his leftovers. So we'll use the Master Ball against him to get a guaranteed capture. And we can move on into Brock's Gym. Brock once again has a type advantage over us, but we still have Hidden Power Ground. And this move might have been the making of this run. Because it's a one-shot on the Graveler and out comes Onyx. It's a two-shot on Onyx, and for some reason he decided to use Bide, which was incredibly useless. Royhorn puts up no resistance whatsoever either as we grow to level 62. Omastar isn't a star performer in this particular run, and neither is Kabutops. They both go down to a single hidden power ground as well, and we have defeated Brock in a time of 1 hour 18 minutes and 44 seconds. We are gaining yet more time against Furret as we move on into Cinnabar Island where we have a little chat with Blue pick up our penultimate rare candy, and move on to the Seafoam Islands where Blaine has relocated. He is a Fire-type specialist who will lead with Macargo, and unfortunately for Macargo, it's four times weak to Ground-type moves, so we'll use a Hidden Power against it to knock it out, and we are on to the Bumhead Fire Duck. Hidden Power is a one-shot on the Bumhead Fire Duck, and the final Pokemon is Rapidash. Rapidash gets knocked out in the same way, and we have defeated Blaine in a time of 1 hour, 20 minutes, and 28 seconds. And that brings us on very nicely to our penultimate gym leader, Janine the Poison type specialist with the very low leveled Pokemon, so it is just a one shot on every single one of her Pokemon. Crobats, the pair of Weezing, Venomoth and Ariados all go down to a single shot each. Goodness me, I really wish that Janine had stronger Pokemon because she has such an excellent story being the daughter of an Elite Four member who took over the gym. But we get the Soul Badge in a time of 1 hour, 21 minutes and 9 seconds. Let's now move on to Blue. Although very quickly before we face him, we are going to replace Hidden Power with Steel Wing for his pesky pesky rock type Pokemon. And he will lead this time with Pidgeot. So it's bird against bird, but our bird is the better bird by far because we knock it out in just two shots. And out comes Rhydon. Steel Wing misses and we get hit by Rock Slide and we are losing control of this battle already. So let's now replace the pink bow with the leftovers to give us some health healing throughout the course of the battle. And we'll try again. Once again we use Return against the Pidgeot, and this time it uses Mirror Move. And a quirk of Generation 2 is all the enemy Pokémon have minimal friendship, so a Return will do the least amount of damage it possibly could. Rhydon then sets up a pesky Sandstorm, so we are going to be taking damage at the end of each turn for a few turns, but we knock it out with a couple of Steel Wings and a Return, and we are on to Alakazam. As we saw with Sabrina, Return can knock out Alakazam in a single shot, we grow to level 64 and out comes Gyarados. I was hoping not to Oko the Gyarados to get a Rain Dance up, but in this instance we get a critical hit, and the Sandstorm has subsided. We're on 112 HP as the Arcanine comes out, it's going to be a two shot against the Arcanine, and he doesn't heal there. That brings us on to Executor, we'd use a single Drill Pack against the Executor to knock it out in one, and we have defeated Blue in a time of 1 hour 23 minutes and 16 seconds. We are 8 minutes 45 seconds ahead of Furret, this is a phenomenal pace. I don't think we've ever been on this pace at all in any of our runs, so we're going to go over to Mount Silver, we are going to pick up the Rare Candy, and now it's time to see if Furret's reign will be incredibly short-lived. As always, we'll start with our current level and our current learn set, and we'll chop and change things from there. This is Red, and this is his Pikachu. 
His Pikachu is trivial for us, thank goodness, because we knock it out in one shot, and he sends out Blastoise second. Blastoise has Blizzard, which is why he sends it out second, and Blizzard does an awful lot of damage. We're down to 5 HP as we knock out the Blastoise, and out comes Espeon. We use Return against the Espeon, but Psychic knocks us out. I try a couple more times at level 64, but we get nowhere really far at all, so we're going to grow to level 67. Once again, the Pikachu is entirely irrelevant in this particular battle, so we'll knock it out in one shot and move on to Blastoise. We take off roughly a third of his health each time as he sets up Rain Dance. His Blizzard misses, and we are on full health for the Espeon. Return takes it deep into the yellow as Psychic gets a very strong hit back on us. We're on 92 HP, going up to 104 as the Snorlax comes out. We use Return and take off an awful lot more health than I thought it would. I then use Mirror Move because I was going to try and buff my special defense, but that really was a misplay because Body Slam knocks us out. So it's time to grow up another three levels, this time we're going to be at level 70, so let's give it another go here. Of course, the Pikachu is entirely meaningless, we knock it out in a single return, so let's move on to Blastoise. Blastoise plays out in exactly the same way as before with a Rain Dance into Blizzard Miss and a three shots with Return, and we're back onto Espeon. We get a lucky critical hit against the Espeon to knock it out in one, and we are on to Snorlax. Snorlax uses Amnesia on the first turn, which is great for us because we're a physical attacker. Body Slam does not paralyze us, and we have knocked it out. That means that Charizard is out, and we knock it out in two shots while taking an awful lot of damage from Flamethrower. We are on 18 HP as his final Venusaur comes out. We use a Drill Pack against it, and it takes it deep into the red. Venusaur takes in Sunlight. This is a guaranteed win at this point. We have defeated Red in a time of 1 hour, 28 minutes, and 44 seconds. That is our fastest by far, and our first under 90 seconds. Way to go, Kenya. I am so, so proud of you. And unfortunately for Farrett, that means his reign was incredibly short-lived. So at the top of the leaderboard, we have Firo in first place, Farid in second place, and Girafferig in third place. On the other end of the leaderboard, Paul Stantler has now moved down into 11th place, and we still have nothing to challenge Macargo down in 27th at the very bottom. And with that, we are done. So I'm going to say thank you all so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this run. If you have, please do leave a like. If you've got anything to say at all, leave it in the comments below. If you've really enjoyed yourself, please do consider subscribing. And until next time, I'll say thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all very, very soon.